seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because, apparently, we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Everything basically is income, unless the IRS basically says otherwise. But the second question we have to ask is, if it is income, where should it be recorded? We've touched on this a few times in prior presentations, but it is, of course, a crucial question because it makes a difference to the income taxes as to where it's going to be reported. If it was W-2 income, it would be reported on page one of the form 1040, and it would be subject to self to payroll taxes, which would be deducted on the W-2, but only the employee portion. If it was sole proprietorship income, it has to be reported on the Schedule C, in which case you do get the deductions, which is great, but you're subject to the self-employment tax, both employee and employer portion on the net income. So that's going to make a big difference. And there's questions in terms of some income having more preferable tax rates, most income being taxed at ordinary income tax rates, some such as the qualified dividends, possibly long-term capital gains, having more favorable tax rates. All right. So accounting for your income for income tax purposes differs at times from accounting for financial purposes. This section discusses some of the more common differences that may affect business transactions. So figure your business income on the basis of a tax year and account and according to your regular method of accounting. So we talked about this before when we focused in on the accounting period, which for taxes usually is a calendar year, but you can think of having a different kind of year for a fiscal year. And then the accounting method that would be used normally for taxes other than the Schedule C, like reporting deductions for a Schedule A, we use a cash-based method for the most part until the IRS tells us when we can't use a cash-based method. On the Schedule C, we could elect possibly a cash-based method, but we might be forced to have an accrual method in some cases, such as if there is inventory, and we might just choose to have an, an accrual method, in which case we have a different revenue recognition method for income on the Schedule C than we do possibly when we're looking at income elsewhere, which is typically on a cash-based method. So if the sale of a product is an income producing factor in your business, you usually have to use inventories to clearly show your income. Dealers in real estate are not allowed to use uh, inventories. For more information on inventories, you can see chapter two. So we talked about the concept of inventory and how it might tell us or force us to push from a cash-based method to an accrual-based method. When you think about real estate, uh, thinking about selling actual you know, physical property, real estate, then uh, that could also complicate how you would think of an inventory situation. In other words, some things can either be inventory or non-inventory depending on the how they are used. If I have a forklift and I'm using it in the business to move stuff around, it would generally be reported as property planted equipment, you would think, the cost of it being allocated over the useful life. But if I buy and sell forklifts, then the forklifts are basically inventory, in which case I would expense it when I sell them, you would think, in terms of cost of goods sold. But real estate can get a little bit messy because of the size and the type of industry that real estate is in when you're buying and selling inventory that are basically homes. 